The Hive Cluster is under attack. Hey there, StarCraft fans, it's Falco Paladin coming at you with yet another edition of StarCraft Brood War Remastered. Today it's going to be Light and Soul Key going at it here on Neo Sylphid for us. Top side, it's going to be our Blue Zerg player. It is Soul Key, uh, ASL Champion 16. And on the bottom left, it's maybe the best Terran player in the world competing right now. It is Light under his Maverick Smurf name. Maybe he likes Top Gun, right? Maverick is Tom Cruise's call sign in Top Gun and Top Gun uh, Maverick, which is why they named it Maverick. Hey, subscribe for more immediately obvious movie trivia. <laughs> anyway, hope things are good for you today. Got a nice ZVT lined up for you. The most popular matchup on the channel, I would say, outside of Bisu versus Flash, which is not a ZVT, but is Bisu versus Flash. <laughs> so, Neo Sylphid, RJB Replay, Monday in April, the time of the year when Northern Hemisphere weather is the same as Southern Hemisphere weather because of how the weather works. And, oh, early scouting drone here. Light does like to proxy, so Sulky is being very, very careful. Doom. Dude, looks like he is going to save up for a hatch first here. He really wants to know. He's looking for proxies. He's checking the center area. I love that. He's going to check down to the bottom right here. Terry's a little bit too slow to get where he wants it to be fast enough. He's like, okay, so there's no wall up at the front, but that's no guarantee there's no Terran here. But by object uh, process of elimination, he knows that light is in the bottom left, and he sees an SCB leaving. So hatch first it is. Reasonably sure that there are no proxies on Neo Sulfid for him today. So, drone scouting. Do it, man. Probe scouting and SCV scouting and all that stuff just to make sure you're not getting cannon rush, not getting proxied. We'll go ahead and up your win rate if you're not doing it already. All right, going for the pool, which says probably a faster third base here. If you don't have an extractor at all, you just got a pool rock in. There's no indication of going for anything fast, right? No super fast, all in with mutalisks on two base. No speedling all ins, just a fast third and a macro opening, right? Yes, yes indeed. What do we got, man? 300 minerals and a hatch. Ciao. Anyway, hit that like button if you're excited to see what's going on in this TVZ. Got ourselves a one racks expand timing. No gas, so it's not a mech opening. Mech fans are like, ah, but if you want to see some mech, man, did I cast like three or four mech versus Zerg replays in the month of March. It's just random. I didn't plan for Mech March. It just happened. Refinery coming up. Extractor harvesting gas. All is well. No all-ins from either of these players. SCB wants the scout. Says, you're getting a lair? Uh, don't have the gas yet, bud. But, oh, hang on. Do you want to do it? Oh. Oh, Lair's over here. Dude, that's so cool. He's like, okay, SCV, your job is to now not be allowed to get into the natural base and see that lair. Don't see the 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 lair. Don't oh, he saw the lair. <laughs> bummer. Absolute bummer. So, yeah, sees the lair. Sulky tried to hat hide it, but come on. Come on, what's a Zerg player going to do in the modern era other than open up Mutalisks? No second gas here yet, so we're not going for like a hundred thousand Mutos with plus one attack or anything. Third base, looking super happy. Terran's making a ton of Marines, which the Lynx need to see. How many Marines are there? Is there medic support? Well, not yet, because the Academy just finished, but probably going to fire up a couple medics with this round, I would guess based on the timing here. And instead, we go for a commsat station and stim and then fire up the medics. Okay. So two medics getting processed here and trained and outfitted and whatever, however else 
you train medics. I don't know. I guess you're like, all right, here's your suit. This will protect you from Zerglings a little bit. And in the suit, there's this magic wand you hold up to injured units, uh, biological units, and they'll get healed up. That, that, that's the training, I guess. <laughs> this is a lot of lings, actually. Surprising amount of lings getting fired up. It's 29 to 19 workers from light. Soul key. I was just all ready for him to just fire a bunch of mutas. Instead, he sneaks a hydralisk den on me. Somewhere. Oh, down here at the third. Gets lurker. Oh my gosh, he's going to try to bust. He's going to try to lurker ling bust. The oh, there's a couple of fire bats already. Get the Seraph! Fire bats! Do what you got to do against these lings, man. It looks like there's going to be enough fire bat DPS here to keep these guys, well, some of these guys alive. And then the lings go for the run by deep. Deep into light's base. Oh, Marines are popping out of barracks and getting instantly murked by these lings. This group is like, can we get something done on the other side? There are no sunkens up here. There's a handful of lings. They don't want to engage with this. They try to kill the... Well, they do. They get the, one of the fire bats. There are two fire bats. Now there's just one. More Marines keep popping out here and dying, but they're getting hits off on the lings, and the lings eventually... It's not going to happen, man. Not going to happen. Yeah, just pure speed ling here. Dude, this fire bat, though. Seven kill fire bat getting healed up. Nine kills. He's like, thank you, medics. You're the best. And they're like, yeah, uh, our, our training was pretty easy. I'm glad we could help you out, man. Oh, oh, and that's the horrors of war. Somebody who just complimented you getting exploded. And then the, and then the medics. Oh, and then the medics. The medics all die. Well, actually, this one makes it home. There are no medics to heal her. Heal thyself, physician. That's what the Marines are telling this medic. Or physician, heal thyself? I think that's actually the more correct way to say that in English. Queen's Nest on the way. Dude, no spire opening. I, I love it. I love it, no spire opening. It's just like 90% of the ZVTs that I cast, it's like, hmm. You went to base, Muta. Incredible. Wow, you killed some stuff. You killed some SCBs. Your Muta's died. Need. I don't know. I'm a little bit over it, but this is not a mutalisk opening. I'm so happy. It's getting a hive at seven minutes. Look at how fast you can get a hive if you don't make any mutalisk. This is great. Just make a handful of lurkers. You don't have to make 12 of them. Three is good. Doing a little calm, sad action here. Sees uh, no hive. Sees the spire timing at seven minutes and goes, huh. And then scans the hive here at the natural because he knows that's where the lair is. Anyway, still no third gas here. 29 to 39 workers. Soul Key trying to catch up in workers here just a little bit. That's her on that hive tech. Feeling pretty good. Still two base in it here is light. Uh, no sign of a command center in the production tab. No command center. Just kind of hanging out either. There's a factory on the way. Ooh, a second. Oh, my gosh. A second and a third factory on the way, actually. <gasps> it is a mech transition out of light. Mech players rejoice. Mech fans rejoice. They're like, I do mech on ladder all the time, and it's fantastic. Why doesn't Light do it every time? Well, because if you do the same strategy every time, players will really learn to accommodate for what you are and counter you pretty much every time you play. It's a Zealot's problem, right? Zealot's a really talented Zerg player, but he goes for all-ins every single game. So RJB is of the strict opinion that Zealot's never going to do anything in ASL because he just cheeses every game. And if you know it's Zealot, and you know he's going to cheese, you can shut it down enough that he's never winning an ASL. That's what it comes down to. You can't be good enough at cheese to execute it to the point that you win an ASL by cheesing the whole time. It's just not possible. You can be the best cheeser of all time, but the counter to cheese is knowing that it's coming, scouting it, and then shutting it down with the correct build order and correct everything. What are these firebots up to? Look at Sulky scouting this. He's like, hmm, what if there's any shenanigans down here? Shenanigans! Shenanigans are here. All right, see, two siege tanks. Ooh, just big, big, big blood splatter there. Good grief. 
light. That kind of felt good, but you're at, what, 53 to 39 workers. Your army is big. Your two base pushing out with tank support like an absolute boss. Third base coming in behind it. Attack and expand is what Day9 taught me many, many, many years ago. And I don't know if we have an answer to this. Mm, Adrenal's on the way. Consume's on the way. Just delay enough to get consume out, and then maybe we can talk about holding here, but... Yeah, I think that's what's going to have to be. It's going to have to be a hold until Consume shows up. Lurkers are like, Sunken, you take these tank hits. We don't want to do it. Uh, I don't know about walking right... Okay, maybe, maybe let the tanks do this. Maybe don't walk into Sunken Lurker, guys. That's sort of the thing that kills you the most. It was an SCV that died. That's funny. That is very funny. Oof, Lurker down. Lings don't have their Adrenal yet. They're hacking away at this tank. They do get a tank anyway. All right, still two tanks remaining, though. More tanks in production. Vultures on the way. Okay, technically no tanks in production, but Vultures in production. Spider Mines have already been researched. And the Dark Swarm pops, and it's like, ah, oh, well, we're out, man. Peace. Let's catch you later. So, Plague? Yeah, Plague's on the way. Carapace upgrades coming in. Nidus Canal allowing for the quick reinforcement over here to this third base, which is exactly where Light is going. With four tanks now. Lings have Adrenal, though. Not enough Lings to really do anything here. Ouch. Did he drag spider mines into those medics? How did they die? Yeah. Yeah. All right, man. Three siege tanks just kind of casually sieging this third base. Lings roll down and... Oh, crap. There's medics now. Never mind. These tanks are fine. <laughs> Just got to get some high ground somehow. Are we willing to sack some vultures to get high ground vision? He scanned to get some high ground vision. This third base is in trouble, but it continues to mine. Okay, drones are dying. Gah, spider lings are like, kill us. Don't kill the defilers. No, oh, the filer dies anyway. I think a spider mine might have done it. Vultures are like, we need this permanent high ground so we can kill his base. Hurry, get up there. Get past the lurkers. There you go. Get past the lurkers. Get out of range of the spines. And this base, okay, light. Light is crushing this third base. More lurkers come out of the Nidus Canal. Hasn't been able to kill that. That's well positioned to not be easily attacked by tanks from the low ground. I love that. You got to scan if you're going to kill these things. We're just here to kill drones, I guess. Ooh, try to get a spider mine down. Lurkers are like, no. Seven kills and eight kills on those lurks. MVPs. This base is not dead yet. Uh, can we... We can scan. We can scan. Oh, it's the Muta tech switch. Sulky's like, you thought I wasn't making any Mutas. <laughs> and he wipes out these tanks. What a sick move from Sulky. He needed that to keep this base alive. It's still 73 to 38 workers. This should not be a tenable position for Zerg to ever ever have a hope of winning, man. It is three basing for the Terran. It is now four basing for the Terran. The anti-air for the Mutas isn't spectacular, but ten turrets at a time are being produced, so that's nice. They're getting Flyer Carapace, too. Which is absolutely fantastic. I love that we're getting Flyer Carapace here. At 13 minutes. Zerg getting a fourth up that right side at about a two o'clock spot. Mutas finally get chased away by the Charon boosted Goliaths. Now, the question is, are we going to see a greater spire and maybe some guardians in this game, which I'm not a huge fan of? What is this? Oh, another evolution chamber. Okay. Further upgrades are required by Soul Key, but dude, 70. 71 to 45 total workers here in favor of light. Oh, free SCVs. Free SCVs, free SCVs. Not going to take... Okay. We're going to take the free SCVs, Bulky says. Good. Good, good, good. Trebian. Trebian. We'll see. Yeah. Lings are like, can we scout? The vultures are like, no. We have spider mines everywhere. We've got vultures everywhere. Good luck with that, man. God, there's a lot of turrets here at this fourth base. Hmm. Six turrets at one base. It's probably overkill for the number of mutalisks these are. I just 
these guys are hanging out, and I feel like they want to be guardians so bad. We're not greater spiring here, so possibly not. This third base staying alive is so good for Solky as this wing triggers two spider mines with his little body. Great trade. Zerg will take that a million times. Radiate pops. Ooh, double irradiate on the Muta stack. Oh, gosh. Okay, so all the Mutas are just dead. They're going to stay in here, try to kill as many Mutas as they can, but they are dead. All right. There no, no intent to make those into Guardians today. The Muta threat has been dealt with just in time for the Flyer Carapace to finish. <laughs> it's very sad for Soul Key. 62 to 47 workers. He's trying to drone his face off here. Hydras are out to try to deal with the spider mines. Hydras? I like them for spider mine clearing crews, but you're not going to deal with mech with hydras, I'm afraid. These are plus two siege tanks, man. Hydras will get destroyed by plus two siege tanks and plus three siege tanks because that upgrade's coming. You know it is. Oh, the lings, they knew there wasn't any ground defense at this base. I mean, even with Dark Swarm, you're taking some splash damage from these tanks. Ah, see, hiders are dying inside the Dark Swarm. Good irradiate to Plague. Big ol' Plague coming down. Overlord's dying. The supply block on Soul Key. Not anymore. Okay, that's a barrack. Someone, is there an attack on this base? No. It's a single, single barracks. Barracks are floated out. And some of them are getting killed. And others are being left alone for scouting purposes. Some of them are on fire, but actively being left alone. Ultralisk Cavern on the way. I don't know. I just feel like Light's going to win this game. If you're up 71 to 49 workers and you're mecking, it's just, it's an easy two-part plan here. The trick is getting to 71 out of over 49 workers and mecking. Not easy to do. Soul Key is, is kind of trying to make this work. Got an Ultralisk Cavern on the way. It's just these hiders and these lings Unless they're being dropped on top of these tanks, they are not going to deal with these tanks at all. Yeah, look at this. Tank set up to protect the natural base. They might get a bunker. No. Okay, Sulky is dead. He's going to get a cancel on this, which is very cool. Oops, Science Vessel got killed too. That's fantastic. Yeah, I, this game's over. Like, I don't even know. I appreciate the supply looks kind of similar, but economically, Light is a juggernaut. He's firing up four tanks and four vultures at a time, getting further upgrades. Once he gets to 3-3, you don't even need 3-3. He's winning now, but when he gets up to 3-3, he's going to be a lot happier. Kitan is plating on the way for the Ultras, but they're not going to be in any numbers to really threaten this. Right? He doesn't have... Actually, he has a lot of cash for Ultras. Uh, if Sulky wanted to fire up a bunch of Ultralisks, he certainly could right now. I don't know what he's waiting for. They'll, he would run out, doesn't have enough supply to fire up a ton of Ultralisks, however. Which is definitely an issue. He just, yeah, man. He's trying to run into tank lines with Hiders and Lings and Dark Swarm. It's not going to work. It's not how this works. You either need to drop or you need to have some of the best queen control for Spawn Broodling... I've ever seen. We have seen wins against Mech on the channel in the last month, okay? And what it comes down to is really insane queen play in conjunction with Hydras, right? The Hydras and Lings will trade with uh, Goliaths really well. If you start firing up a ton of queens, you're going to do more Goliaths than you're going to do Vultures. So you spawn brutaling the tanks, you do a good job of keeping the queens alive so they don't spawn brutaling a tank and die. They spawn brutaling a tank and get out of there and live to fight again. And if you do play that extremely well, you can defeat a mecking Terran player. But, um, yeah, Sulky's trying to expand down this right way without really any army to protect it. I mean, sure, four hydras are cool. Yeah, look at them wipe out those vultures. Pfft. Vultures are lame. The lamest of all the lamest. Yeah, that's the base is not happening. 
Cool. So Sulky is on four bases. This feels okay. He's trying to get fifth base here, but against a Mecking Terran. Tank position. We know about that. Once again. Okay, that's a really nice Dark Swarm, but it protects the tanks from your Hydras when you do that. So Lings have to handle it, and they do. Pretty ably. That's some really nice Adrenaline stuff there with... Cra yeah, the Crackling upgrade. 3-2... On the attack and armor upgrades as well. Anabolic synthesis coming in, and there you go. There's your 13 Ultralisk fire up. Here. From Solki. There we go. The Ultras are up. But it's tough. I've seen Zerg players manage to win from this position. They're just running Lings and Ultras across the map. It's the very much the Larva strategy. As the space dies, didn't even need to use the tank position to kill this. He just walked up and was like... Although it's not an up... Again, it's a feature that looks like it's high ground, but it certainly isn't for whatever reason. But yeah, running ultras across a wide open field into a million plus three siege tanks is a tough thing to do. And hey, look, we've got plus three. Light does. So, I don't know. This isn't micro. This is just positioning. This is just you position spider mines and tanks and vultures and... The Zerg player tries to run into you, and yeah, you might want to go ahead and like micro your vultures back or your goliaths back a little bit, but tanks are inherently really not microable. You can unsiege them and try to escape with them, but that's basically admitting you're dead. So this is actually a good number of ultralisks. Oh my gosh. All right, Sulky's gonna wipe out a pretty good number of tanks here. Six or seven of them are going to go down. That ultra could not because he was behind this wall. All right. All right. Dude, Sulky is actually crushing right now. Uh, Remember when I was like, you need drops or you need queens, and Sulky's like, mm, no, I'm going to do Larva style. Because that this is how Larva plays against Mac. He just sends Lings and Ultras across the map into places that are not as well defended. He won't send them into, like, the main group of tanks. Right, he'll go to deal with this one. I mean, this is basically what Sulky is doing, right? Dude, if... Sulky gonna win this game? He really should not win this game. I'm just gonna tell you right now, from all the StarCraft I've cast and all the StarCraft I've ever watched in my entire life, he really should not win this game. He's starting to mine out of his main base. His natural base is entirely out of minerals. He has not been able to secure or resecure the bottom right corner. He didn't really have it secured in the first place, so it's not a re-secure. It is an attempt to secure. Yeah, yeah, it is. Man, Sulky trying to double expand. Trying to take the two bases that are, again, really hard to hold against siege tanks, but Sulky is desperate. He's desperate. He's going to take the bases that are more easily available to him, but also... Ow. Egg, not egg, dead. All right? Yeah. Vultures are like, we can clean out these lings. We need the big daddies to deal with the other big daddies, which are ultralists. Yeah. Vulture down. Defilers! Get some Dark Swarm down. Get assassinated outside of the Dark Swarm, which they provided. Ooh, this base in trouble, but man, let's expand it down here, too. Okay. Okay. This is it. I mean, I am... This would have to be a miraculous, miraculous win for Soul Key. This base is up. It's mining. It's not impossible. This base is going to be up and mining very, very soon. I was going to say our drone. Yeah, drones are heading down that direction. This base is saved. It's a big deal for Light, man. He is just taking bases like it's going out of style. Zerg player desperately trying to get up like a fifth or a sixth base. And Light's like, oh, got six bases. Don't worry about it. Okay. Yeah, he's got six bases with this one. Lane's Hydra. It's just, it's nothing. It's little tiny groups of Hydras and like one Defiler. Another Defiler gets sniped by Vultures. It's three Hydras and an Ultralisk. And Light's like, don't make me laugh. Ha, 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 ha. Ah, 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 ah. Yeah, I do, I'm staring at this. I'm like, hey, tanks are dying. That's cute. Look at that. Look at that tank die. Oh, another one's going to go down. Very cool. But like five Ultralisks died for three tanks. 
The math does not make any sense. 163 to 109. Light is up, and Light is just squeezing his fist around the neck of our guy, Soul Key. And that's it. GG taps. <laughs> Soul Key taps out. <laughs> Light is our winner in 24 minutes. What a fantastic showing here, man. Wow. That was a really, really excellently done transition into mech. Like, just smooth as butter. He's expanding while he's, ex while he's transitioning. I'm not sure if that light tech switch or the ugh, sulky tech switch into mutalisks was what was needed, but hey. It got some stuff done. It killed some tanks. It killed a bunch of SCVs, but I'm not sure that Light's economy was ever really, really super injured by said deaths of SCVs. Anywho, yeah, man, this is just Light. He's one of the best mecking players in the history of StarCraft. He's been doing it forever. And he's just like, hey, Sulky, how about I throw this at you on this map? And he's like, ah, crap. This is a pretty good map for mech just because of these tank positions. Which, hey, look, these ones came into play too. This could be here, could be here. Science vessels, I'm not even sure how many science vessels died today. Maybe a couple. I really didn't notice any focus of Sol uh, Sulky to get these science vessels killed in any real numbers. That's an issue, but... Yeah, GG. I mean, light. Making it, making it look easy. When it is most assuredly not. 195,000 points, 170,000 points here. Sulky outproducing the turn, but when you're mech, bam, your kill death ratio is going to be good. A 5 to 2 kill death ratio is a big freaking deal. 18 to 8 buildings raise. Some decent building raising there from Sulky's side. And 57 to 55 resources spent. Let me tell you who had more here at light. Light had more resources spent. That's not happening. That's never happening. Anyway, so GG, man. I mean, I don't know. Not, not a crazy exciting game. But, you know, you got to sprinkle in a good game every once in a while. Or you guys get tired of crazy exciting games and get numb, numb to them, right? I think that maybe that's what's happening. I don't know. Anyway, thanks for watching. That's going to be it for me. This is Ben Falcon Paladin coming at you with yet another edition of... Star Craft Brood War, a remastered. Go ahead, hit that like button, hit that subscribe if you like what you saw and what you heard today. You can also catch me on Twitter, Facebook, Patreon, and Twitch, all at slash Falcon Paladin. And until next time, as always, thank you so much for watching. You take care of yourself.